We are going to be looking at the abstract expressionist movement before we begin our painting. So what we're going to learn through this video is when the abstract expressionist movement happened, what it was and what was taking place in history to kind of kickstart the movement. We're going to learn the characteristics and apply those characteristics to our own artwork. Um, of abstract expressionist art, and then we're going to look at some artists that are linked with the movement. There are a ton, so we're going to focus on um, just a handful, but we're going to go ahead and look at their work too throughout our lesson. So when did this movement happen? It started in the early 1940s and it developed through the 1950s. It was also called the New York School, um, not just the Abstract Expressionist Movement. And um, that helps us to remember that it primarily happened in New York City. So I want you to think, what was going on in the world at that time, early 1940s? You have World War II just broke out in Europe. Um, and so there's a global crisis going on. And so that really um, kick-started the abstract expressionist movement. Um, art historian um, Michael Leha in the 1990s discussed, I'm looking at the second quote here, um, the importance of the discourse concerning modern man. And he looks at the worldwide system that was going on, um, he states, in this reference system, abstract expressionism could be seen as a valid expression of the crisis of modern man, and as a result, according to Leha, took on a central role in the cultural debate of the time. So there were more than just World War II happening. Right before that, you have an economic crisis um, in the Depression, um, and man feeling like there's no control. There's so many things that could go awry. Um, and so you could actually see this in the characteristics of ab abstract expressionism. Um, in that first quote, for abstract expressionists, the authenticity or value of work lay in its directness and immediacy of expression. A painting is meant to be a revelation of the artist's authentic identity. So we're moving away from representational work. Um, the surrealist movement was just happening as well previously to the expressionist movement. And we are linking what's portrayed in their artwork with um, emotion and identity that way. There really was a feeling of crisis concerning the image of humanity. So characteristics, what can we look at and see in an abstract expressionist work? So they were all over compositions without clear focal points. There are some pieces you can see um, from like Willem de Kooning that, okay, there's a, a person, a very abstracted person in the image, but most of the time there is no clear focal point. There's an emphasis on free, spontaneous, um, and personal emotional expression. Um, a lot of times things were not truly planned in the pieces they were making. Large abstract paintings, we're not talking about small, um, you know, eight by 10 paintings. These were huge pieces that took over entire walls. Um, so size really plays a role in abstract expressionist work. And lastly, they have swaths of paint that embodied and elicited emotion. So um, we will look at line and shape and how different lines kind of elicit different emotions along with color and how those play a role in the message that you are trying to send through the work. A few artists from this movement, most notably or recognizable is probably Jackson Pollock. Um, you have Barnett Newman, Mark Rothko is also um, one of the most recognizable names. It is okay if you do not recognize any of these names. Um, 
Willem de Kooning, Richard Diebenkorn, Helen Frankenthaler, Franz Klein, which was the piece that uh, we looked at a couple slides ago, Lee Krasner, Joan Mitchell, and Hans Hoffman. Um, again, that is only 10 of many, um, but those are probably the biggest names of this movement. Lastly, just a few of my references. You can always use these and look to them. Um, the Met Museum is a great resource. The MoMA uh, website, I know I don't have that listed here, but Museum of Modern Art um, has a great collection of abstract expressionist work. If you want to look more into them, you can go there. Um, but these are um, great resources if you want to look further into abstract expressionist work.